Mars Phoenix lander is headed for the north polar region of Mars, and its goal will be to search for habitable regions, uh, places where life may have existed in the past. The phase that we're in now is called cruise. Which sounds really easy and laid back, although it's actually a very busy time for the spacecraft teams. We're busy. The teams are busily preparing um, for the science that's going to occur. Uh, it's fitting that they would compare to archery, which is a real thing, but what they show and their understanding of it is completely wrong and screwed up. There's a video out there that demonstrates this by a genius guy who uh, rediscovered the ancient art of archery and how you have the arrow on the right side, if you're right-handed, the right side of the bow, on the outside of the bow. You held the arrows in your right hand and you would uh, place them on the bow and shoot one to three arrows at a time at a very rapid rate, practically like a, a machine gun or at least a semi-automatic weapon. Launching a spacecraft to Mars, um, it's a little different. Uh, the bow in this case is a 250 ton rocket. This is a 250 ton rocket. This is a 250 ton rocket, uh, over 420 million miles. Yeah, right. Just come on. This is um, like trying to shoot your arrow from Dodger Stadium and hitting home plate at Wrigley Field in Chicago. So this seems almost like an impossible uh, shot to take. We like to show you real world objects working just for fun. We like to show you uh, chemtrail fibers and our vertical slit pupils. There's also a lot of mockery going on here. Um, they like to cut back and forth between an arrow, bow and arrow, which is a real thing in real life, but they make it CGI and they compare it to their CGI spaceship, which is not a real thing in real life. And I covered this in another video. It's a cone. If you drop a cone, the pointy end goes in the front whenever there's air, okay? But they're showing an arrow, which is the exact example that I had used to demonstrate the fact that uh, it would orient like an arrow, but they don't have it do that because it's CGI. They can do whatever they want. They orient it like an arrow flying backwards and tell you that that's reality. They're getting lazy and going wild with CGI. <laughs> it's Barney. You gotta use your imagination. Even for things here on Earth that are supposed to be real, like the Deep Space Network. That's what they do. And they mock you. And you should be totally pissed off because they're doing it with your money. And they're teaching you nonsense and saying that this is the height of science. And your best minds go towards this and then are, you know, rejected and fall flat uh, because it's just a bunch of fakery. But uh, in reality, it's, it's uh, a lot more complicated than that. Earth and Mars are rotating around the sun at, at various speeds and constant motion. This is so dark and mysterious that it generates butterflies in my stomach and that goes to tickles in my spine and that creates goose pimples and then that penetrates my mind and, th and then it goes now look at this. The animation is wrong. Do you see why? Do you see why? Mars, it's between the Earth and the Sun. Now, of course, our spacecraft is moving at about 60,000 miles per hour. Now, of course, when someone's lying to you, they just can't help but smile, can they? <laughs> it never stops. The lying from NASA never stops. The weight, the speed, the target, the distance, it's all lies. Track the spacecraft using the Deep Space Network of antennas. The Deep Space Network is one of my favorite discoveries in looking at this. You can tell, these are all actors and this stuff is total bullcrap. Maybe you can't, but the Deep Space Network is the only entity that checks what uh, they hear back from the satellites. And it's just like an old, like an ancient seer or magician um, looking at, um, you know, scattered bones or, uh, 
intestines and divining things from what is around you that you can't see, the future or whatever, divining that out and telling the people this nonsense. That is what the Deep Space Network is. Oh, well, we know where the spacecraft is and we give it commands and it listens and it goes and moves and does what we want it to do and and it, we know how far away it is and how fast it's going and it is absolutely 100 percent bullcrap there's no thing out there other than the deep space network that can hear these things like the voyager it's total total lies it's an absolute joke 22 hours prior to entry we have one last chance the duper's delight is palpable. They cannot wipe the shitty grin off their faces telling you this stuff. The navigation team does. But uh, in reality, it's... it's uh... This is one thing he says that is true. But uh, in reality, it's, it's uh, a lot more complicated than that. It's a lot more complicated than shooting a bow and arrow. That's true, because this, this lie is becoming so thick and convoluted, I don't think it's going to hold that much longer. I hope not. Earth and Mars are rotating around the sun at, at various speeds and constant motion. Even their animations are wrong. Mars is supposed to be farther away from the sun than the Earth. This isn't right. How can I be the only physicist or science person in the entire world uh, who, who doesn't, I mean, who doesn't accept this, who notices these mistakes? It's total lies. It's complete bunk. It's complete bullcrap. These statements that they make are so untenable that they wouldn't hold weight in any serious discussion anywhere else. Yet, they are sitting atop the highest throne of science, and they're spewing out this complete balderdash and getting away with it constantly. I cannot accept it. I just can't. <laughs> That's why I say there must be something else going on to make people so dumb as to be able to just gobble this up. Is it because it's so boring that nobody ever watches this? I just, I don't know. The spacecraft itself is moving very fast across the solar system. It's trying to hit a moving target, and that target is also spinning on its axis. What axis? Why does it have an axis? What determines that axis? And why does the axis not spin around where the north side of the axis would be uh, further away and the south side would be closer and it would stay like that, like when you would spin a top in a bowl. You know what I mean? Why, why does the axis maintain a certain angle as it revolves around 360 degrees? I've never understood that. It doesn't make any sense. You can't demonstrate that in, on, in any way with a gyroscope or a top or anything. It's complete nonsense. Think about it. It's a spinning ball on an axis that's tilted at an angle. The angle is maintained in a Cartesian coordinate system. In the XYZ, that axis is maintained as it rotates 360 degrees around a center point. How could that be? How could that possibly be, even if gravity were what they say it is, and it's not? But even if you grant them that, they couldn't explain that. They can't demonstrate it. It's a complete fabrication. It shouldn't have ever been accepted. Okay, dig into the icy soil. How, what the heck? And then search for the chemical building blocks of life. Um, what is that even? That's just a ridiculous premise. And then study the history of water. What is the history of water and how do you study it? The history of water. Does water have a library you can go in and, and research on with this? I mean, what the heck does that even mean? I mean, what exactly about this doesn't seem like a big show, like a big trick, 